1 Kings chapter 1, verses 15 to 21 in the New International Version tells us, So Bathsheba went to see the aged king in his room where Abishag, the Shumanite, Shumanite was attending him. Bathsheba bowed down, prostrating herself before the king. What is it you want? The king asked. She said to him, My lord, you yourself swore to me, your servant, by the Lord your God, Solomon, your son, shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne. But now Adonijah has become king, and you, my lord, the king, do not know about it. He has sacrificed great numbers of cattle, fattened calves and sheep, and has invited all the king's sons, Abathar, the priest, and Joab, the commander of the army. But he has not invited Solomon, your servant. My lord, the king, the eyes of Israel are on you to learn from you who will sit on the throne of my lord, the king, after him. Otherwise, as soon as my lord, the king, is laid to rest with his ancestors, and I and my son, Solomon, will be treated as criminals. So on this afternoon, I want to tell you, church, that there's more to Bathsheba. There's more to Bathsheba. You may be seated. You know, the fact is, there is usually more to a person, place, or thing than what lies on the surface. If you are uh, familiar of a certain story about four blind men, when they were in the presence of an elephant, these blind men, they realized that there was more to an elephant than what sighted people thought. You see, the first blind man, he touched the side of the elephant and he said, that's a wall. <laughs> the second blind man, he touched the leg of the elephant. He said, no, it's a tree. The third blind man touched the trunk and he said, it's more like a serpent. Then the fourth blind, the fourth blind man, he touched the tail and he said, no, it's a broom. <laughs> so you see these four blind men, they envisioned the elephant in different ways. There was more to an elephant than sighted people thought. And so they proclaimed, there's more. Well, on this woman's day, I want to proclaim to you to let you know that there's more to that Sheba. She's a popular woman in scripture. Many people know her story based off of a single life event. You know how it is when people only know one part of your story. That's why we write songs with the lyrics, you don't know my story. You don't know the things that I've been through. On today, I proclaim that there's more to this woman. There's more to the popular story that many know over there in 2 Samuel, about the 11th chapter, where we find that David, during the springtime, he was on the roof. Now, the Bible tells us that this was the time when kings were off the war. David was not to war at this particular time. He was there on his roof walking around and all of a sudden he saw a beautiful woman bathing. Her name is Bathsheba. He sees Bathsheba and he tells his servants, go down and find out who that woman is. Bring her to me. And what ended up happening, this is a popular story. Bathsheba and David had a rendezvous. Bathsheba was, was actually married to a Hittite called Uriah. <laughs> but as the story goes, they end up having a baby together. And you see what David does is he makes sure that this soldier, her husband, is put on the front line so that he might be killed. And so then Bathsheba is there, ends up being with David. That's the popular story. So much so that when people think about Bathsheba, they think about her and her name has negative connotations. I even read that now in 2019, there's something called the Bathsheba syndrome. <laughs> the Bathsheba syndrome is the ethical failure of successful leaders. Look it up. They put her name together with this idea of when great leaders fail. The idea is even leaders with highly developed moral sense can be tempted by opportunity. But I tell you this afternoon, 
Bathsheba is more than an opportunity. She's been categorized, yet not individualized. I wonder how that makes a person feel. Have you ever been categorized, but not individualized? Can you imagine Bathsheba? I mean, think about your own story. Some things that maybe people think they know about you. That's Bathsheba. Can you imagine the whispers when she went to the market? That's Bathsheba. You, you know about her, don't you? Can you imagine the looks? Because she's been categorized, not individualized. The looks that she got everywhere. She went, you know that's Bathsheba, don't you? The treatment that this woman would have had. She may not have even wanted to come into Ebenezer for Women's Day because she might have wondered what people thought about her. She may come into our churches, but she may sit in the back because Bathsheba is the one that you don't invite to the party. Because you heard about her. Bathsheba is the one that you say, watch how you talk to her and watch your man around her. Bathsheba is the one. But, but, but understand again, the whole story is David was on the rooftop when kings usually went to war. The fact is, no one gets it right 100% of the time. History shouldn't view you or me or even this woman based off of one snapshot. I tell you that she was a woman who had desire, discipline, and determination. First Kings tells us, First Kings 1 tells us that there was a time in her life where she heard the voice of God, she obeyed the first voice of God, and she received the promise of God. Bathsheba heard the voice of God? Yeah. Whatever do you mean? Well, if you look at 1 Kings chapter 1, at the beginning, if you go to about the 11th verse, you will find that Nathan the prophet asked Bathsheba, who is Solomon's mother, to go in and talk to David. Go in and let King David know what's going on. Now, King David's health was failing. And so Nathan went to Bathsheba and said, you go in to King David first. And then I'll go in to King David. Isn't it interesting that God did not have his own prophet, the man, Nathan, to go in to David. But Bathsheba was the one requested, the one who was to go in and talk to the king. She heard the voice of God through this prophet Nathan. That Bathsheba? Yeah. How can somebody like that yeah. hear from God? Yeah. That Bathsheba? Yeah. How can somebody like that yeah. be chosen to go in first? That Bathsheba? Yeah. The same one that we heard about over in 2 Samuel. That Bathsheba. But you ought to be glad about that Bathsheba. Because you see, if God will speak to that Bathsheba, God will speak to that man, and God will speak to that woman, and God will speak to that child, and God will speak to that drug addict, and God will speak to that sinner, and God will speak to the one that we call the underdog. Thank God for God who loves us all the same. Talks to us. It's good news for the underdogs. That Bathsheba was able to hear from God. Don't let the enemy trick you to make you think that because of what you've done or because of what you haven't done, you can't hear from God. God is speaking. Because God has something to say. It just needs a listening ear. She heard the voice of God. But she didn't just hear the voice of God. She was obedient to the voice. Nathan says to her, go in and talk to the king. Let him know. Give him a report, a progress report, if you will. Go in to the king. And she obeyed. She took action. The Bible tells us she went into the king. She laid before him. 
she spoke with boldness and courage. Can you see her talking to the king? My Lord, you yourself, you swore to me, your, you, you swore that Solomon, you said that Solomon, your son, shall be king after me. He will sit on my throne, but now Adonijah has become king. And my Lord, the king, you don't even know about it. She made a bold move. Some actions are bold, but they must be made for justice. sake. This was about justice. And so even in 2019, if you see something wrong and you say nothing, you need to consider Bathsheba. In 2019, if you see something wrong and you do nothing, you need to consider Bathsheba. Even look at Jesus Christ. Jesus took action for the sake of justice. Think about Jesus. Even in the book, The Politics of Jesus, by Aubrey Hendricks Jr. He talks about how Jesus was a political revolutionary, calling for change in the political, social, and economic structures. He talks about how many times Christians are so conservative to the point where when it comes to speaking out on behalf of justice, sometimes we sit back and say, well, God will do it. When God needs our voices, and God needs our people, and God needs Jesus took action. He took action particularly for the little people. You know, the least of these. He took action because he wanted them to live lives that were free of political repression. So when we look at this text, we have to remember that even Jesus sought to heal not only people's physical pain, but also to inspire people and to empower people so that they can remove the unjust social Thank you. 
that she was going. Yeah. Yes, that's the one. You might think that her, his mom was not upset. You might think that she wasn't the proper type of mother, but I tell you, Adonijah did not remain a king.
a beautiful woman would open her mouth. And so on this woman's day is quite fitting to even remind yourself when you get down, when God 